All right, so welcome back. It's our last week of school uh, and that's it. So this is finals week and for our class, we have a final project that we're gonna start today and you'll have this whole week to work on it. Um, you can see for our week at a glance this week, week 20, um, it's the roller coaster engineer final project all week long. And so it's kind of broken into parts and I'm gonna go over the parts with you. We'll do a different part each day. And then on Friday, um, there's an extra credit part you can do or if you missed a part or need more time, it's just kind of like a makeup day to get caught up. So I'm gonna open this up to show you guys. This is the, the assignment here. Um, the Desmos graphing calculator is what we're gonna be using to create this roller coaster track. Okay, that'll be the easiest way to do this and most accurate. Um, it'd be really mean if I tried to make you guys do it by hand. Um, so we're gonna use the Desmos graphing calculator. And then this is the Google Slides here. So when you open this, everyone's gonna have their own copy that's made for them. And let me just go ahead and present the whole thing to you so that way you can see all the parts of the presentation. Um, on this first slide, you're gonna put your name, period six, and then you get to name the roller coaster that you are designing. Part A, um, this is what we're gonna spend the majority of our time on today, is um, kind of like the rules for the coaster that you're gonna create, and then you're gonna put a picture of it right here. So using Desmos, we are going to create um, basically a piecewise function, okay? And we are gonna use um, these things here. So we have at least two linear functions, which are these types of equation, that's the parent version of it. We're gonna have at least one exponential function, y equals a to the x power, a is a number, at least one quadratic function. We've been working with these pretty recently. And at least one absolute value function, y equals absolute value of x. This is the most recent one we've learned about. So you're gonna have um, that many of each of these at least. You can always have more, but these are like the minimum requirements. And then our graph is gonna be in Desmos, but it's gonna be contained to the first quadrant, okay, where everything, all the x values are positive and all the y values are positive. So um, the x-axis is like time, so your coaster is following this track along time, and the y-axis represents the height of your coaster, okay? So um, minimally, the coaster needs to be 30 seconds or longer, okay, but you know, it's it seems like I've been making them even longer than that with the classes so far, um, but at least 30 seconds. And then the height of your coaster should be 456 or lower. So that's just based off of the tallest roller coaster in the world is 456 feet tall. It's really high. All right, so we're gonna do this in Desmos and in Desmos you can sign in with Google and then you can save your work. Okay, so you can come back to it if you don't quite finish this part today. Part B and part A go together. Um, this is just screenshotting all of your functions in Desmos where you have all of your domains listed for your picture. So this would be a screenshot of all your equations that you use for your piecewise function and their domains. Part C is where we analyze the coaster. All right, so you won't be able to analyze it until you are done building it. So this is, this is coming up tomorrow, hopefully, if we finish the first part today. Part D, function attributes. So we're just filling in a table here about our function and evaluating some values of the function at 0, 10, 20, and 30. And then there's an extra credit slide where you can research your favorite roller coaster, include the name of it, its height, how long it runs for, where it is at, a picture of it and why it's your favorite. Okay, so we're gonna be in Desmos's graphing calculator. And so when you guys join Desmos, I do want you to come up here where it says log in and click that and then log in with Google. So go ahead and um, if you want, I could force open that tab for you guys right now because I want you to get signed in with 
Google. So I'm going to do that right now if you don't already have it open. Okay, so hopefully I didn't double open this for anybody, but <laughs> I tried to see who had it open and who didn't. So right up in the top right-hand corner, it says log in. You're going to log in with Google. And then you can title your graph by clicking where it says untitled graph over to the left at the top. Um, it really doesn't matter what you title your own graph. It's for you to find it back. I'm going to title this period six. Final project. Okay. So when you're in Desmos, it, it does put you just kind of in the middle. You see all four quadrants. Um, we're going to be focusing on just the first quadrant here. And you can zoom in and out with the plus and the minus. We're going to be going up to at least 30 along the x-axis because that's the minimum amount of time we want our coaster to be. And then that maximum height is really high up. It's um, 456 feet. So we need to put in the parent functions that we're going to be using, and then we can kind of adjust these um, with uh, values okay so like the y and the x's have to be where they are but then um, like the letters like a b and c those are just numerical values those are real numbers so you know I don't know which one you want to start with you can start with any of them but you're gonna have at least five here um, and then we are doing a function of x so instead of y we're gonna type f of x is equal to so um, if it's a linear piece that we're trying to do that would be b times x, okay, let me just show you what some of these look like, and then you add on some value. So depending on um, the number in front of the x, your slope can change how steep it is. You have negative slope, you go downhill. Um, this is the intercept here, this plus 3. But I don't want my graph to be over here. My roller coaster is not over here any of this stuff. So we are going to have a domain for each part of our function. And the way you do the domain is you use the curly brackets on your keyboard. And so um, we would start at zero, time zero. So zero would be our first domain um, value. And then if you click on the keypad down here, this is where you'll get all four inequality symbols. So you do have two of them on your Chromebook keyboard. You have less than or greater than, but if you need these two, which you do for this assignment, you'll have to come into this to get them. So I put that less than or equal to, and then I put x, and then I put a less than. Um, I could put some, some value in, so I just need to pick my first section of the domain that I'm making the track for. So maybe it's the first 10 seconds. Um, but not inclusive of 10 seconds, just for x less than 10, but x is greater than or equal to 0. So if that's what I'm starting with, that's what it looks like. That doesn't really look like something I want to start my coaster with, but you can change this out. Um, and, you know, maybe I want to start with just a flat line. That's kind of boring. Uh, maybe I want to have some sort of, like, incline going up, right, to um, start a coaster track. So if you come back and look at these things that you need, well, um, I know exponential functions have a nice incline going up. So if I come back here and just change this, um, maybe like 2 to the x power, see what that looks like. Okay, so that's one possibility. You could be starting like this and going up really high. Um, as I change this number here, the 2, I can make it a fraction, like 1 third. Okay, and then, now it's not inclined. It's it's actually going down. So maybe I don't want to do that. Maybe I want, what happens if it's negative? It's definitely going down. 
All right, so now as you're trying to figure this out, um, this is going to rise really fast. The bigger this number is, as I change this value of x, if I'm going up to 10, um, it's going to take a really long time to get there because it's so steep. Um, this would be like 5 to the 10th power, which is a huge number. I could do 2. 2 is a little bit more manageable, but not so much, really. Uh, echo is up to <laughs> 1,000. Okay, so when you're doing the exponential ones, those outputs grow really quick. So, for example, 2. Um, To, to the 10th power, the output is 1,024. That's too big. So that won't work for what I'm trying to do right here because I can't have that height. My height is maxed out at 456, right? Um, if your zoom is too messed up, just hit the home button and it'll take you all the way back, okay? So, you know, what you could do here is also change your, your domain. Maybe I don't want to go all the way up to 10. Okay, if I'm looking at powers of 2, um, maybe I want to make this smaller. Maybe I want to just go up to 5. 2 to the 5th power, is that more manageable? What's the output when it's 2 to the 5th power? 32. So that goes up 32 feet. At a good starting height for your coaster, maybe you want a little higher, maybe six feet. And so if I multiply by two, now I'm going up 64 feet in the air. Um, by two again, 128 feet in the air. So maybe seven is a good value to start with. Okay. It's just going, going, going. So I'm up here. Um, Seven and undefined. The reason it says undefined is because of the symbol is less than. Okay, if I change it or equal to, then it would include it. Um, I have to be careful though, because when I do my next piece of the function, I don't want to include any x values twice. Because if you do that, it's not a function. Um, but you also don't want to have any gaps in your track, because that's not good for a roller coaster. It has to be a continuous function. So this next part here, f of x is equal to um, my next part of the domain, even though I don't know what the function looks like yet, I need to make sure that I include 7. So I'm going to type 7, and then I'm going to use the symbol with the or equal to part. Okay. Uh, on the other side of that, we can then do less than, and maybe I'm going up to like... I'm not sure yet, but just say 15 for right now, okay? So you're going to play around with this and see how these different functions change things. If you just put in the domain and you don't put a function on the other side of the equal sign, what you do is you just get this little blue bar down here that shows um, what it's at, and then it'll change as you change it. So like if I put an x, it changes. If I put 3x, it changes again, okay? Um, you want your track to connect, which means I want to be at this point right here when this starts. And so that kind of takes a little bit of trial and error, trying to get it to work just right, or you can work it out algebraically. Um, maybe you want a flat part of the track for your uh, coaster to go along. Maybe it's taking a little scenic route up at the top. If you want a flat part, uh, a linear horizontal part of your track, you just need to know where you're at. Okay, so where does this line up with the y-axis? I think we figured this out. 2 to the 7th power, was it 128? I think so. So then my function would be f of x equals 128. And now I have a flat line going here. Yeah, it's not a smooth turn, but um, it's continuous and it's a function, so it works. So you're just going through and adding in these different pieces, trying to make a roller coaster 
um, and try and get all these different pieces in. So right now what I have is a piece of a linear function and I also have a piece of an exponential function. I need a quadratic, I need absolute value. Maybe I wanna do like a, well quadratics, those are the parabolas, right? So maybe I wanna do like a loop where you go down and back up. Um, when you're trying to figure out how to type that in though, you might be able to copy and paste this. I'm not really sure. Let's see if it lets you. That slider. Oh, you can do the slider on all of these, which lets you kind of adjust things to where you want to go. So you can play around with it like this. Um, what do these different numbers even mean? Okay. So this is back here on your week at a glance. Rules for transformations of functions. Uh, this is kind of the general way we manipulate functions in the coordinate plane. So there's that vertex where it's hk x minus h plus k that shifts it left, right, up and down. Um, you can have this value here. The a value, if it's negative, it would reflect it about the x-axis. This is um, for also the a is the horizontal stretch or compression. So you have that to kind of help you, but we've had that in all of our lessons for each of these more specifically. So maybe I want a parabola. I, I don't want A to be negative because a, a is negative. It's going to be flipped upside down. I don't want that. So I definitely want A to be positive. Um, B, as that changes, you can see how it moves around the coordinate plane. C is going to bring it. I think up and down. So you can use the sliders to play around with pieces. Um, you can type this in differently too. If you do type in something and then it doesn't show up, it may be because it's not in your domain. So like if I type in the domain of 15, now because 15 here has the lesson symbol, I have to put this lesson or equal to symbol because I need to make sure I include 15. Um, but once I did that, notice how like it disappeared because it's not in the range of that point. So you may not want to put the domain right away. You may want to put the domain right away. It's really kind of playing around with it until you get it to work the way you want it to. Um, you can put parentheses around the X. And you can change its vertex by subtracting H. Okay, so I just did X minus 15, which moved the vertex over here to at 15. And I know I'm trying to line it up with 15. That's still not far enough. So. Too far, 35 is too much. It's just kind of like trial and error until you get it to work. And you can zoom in more and recenter it. And see, that looks like it's close, but this won't work for a function because there is some overlap. And you don't want to have any overlap. I can't have it overlapping like that. Um, so maybe I want to play with the, the K value. Still some overlap.
And if you can't really get it to work there, you can always try a different function right there. Okay, so there is some trial and error with this. Um, maybe I want to go to absolute value of X instead. And that symbol is here on your Desmos keypad. So I'm going to switch this to a six and then I'm going to switch this to 64 because 64 is a perfect square. You know, maybe you want to put the sliders on here to play with this one. Still not. There's one going up to 10. Ten was way too small, and then one hundred is way too big, so it's somewhere in the middle. Let's get closer. I want to switch. I want to shift it over some more. So. lining up perfectly. Um, so now I know I can restrict my domain um, because I don't want this green line to be anything that's less than 15. So I'm going to type this as 15 is greater than or equal to, no, less than or equal to x. And then, you know, where do I want to cut this off? Do I want it to come back to the same height? Do I want it to go lower? Do I want it to go higher? Um, you have some options here on what you want to do. So you're just playing around with these and putting them in, trying to get them to match up. And that is your project. So that's what you guys are working on. Here's an ordered pair, 161. So um, it's a long coaster, that's 100 seconds. So maybe I want to cut it off at 100. So less than 100. And then it's going to pick back up again at 100. I got a 
figure out what do I want now. So um, let me remind you guys how to write the equation of a line when you only know two points that it passes through. Okay, so this purple piece right here, say I want it to go from this point, which I know is 100 and, um, well, now I zoomed out and I forgot what it said. It says undefined because it's not including it. It looks like. change this real quick so I can see what it is. One of my points is 161. I'm going to start a Jamboard with you guys and show you how to do something in case you forgot. This is how we find the equation line given two points. So you have to know what those two points are. One of them is um, 161. That's one ordered pair. And so that's this point right here. And I changed this back to the less than symbol because I didn't want to overlap. I didn't want to include 100 twice on both pieces of the function because then it wouldn't be a function. And then this is where I want it to end. I want it to end at this point down here, which is um, 125. Uh, I could go all the way down to 1. I started at 1, or I could go down to 0. It doesn't matter. Whatever it is you're trying to accomplish. You just have to know your two points. So um, with this, we're going to set one of these as x1, and then this is y1, okay? So we're giving them names. And then this ordered pair, this first coordinate is x2, and this is y2. So um, we're gonna use these two points to find the slope. There's your slope formula, in case you forgot it. It's just a big fraction, and then the numerator, we're going to take y2 and subtract y1. And this is a good place to write in those subtraction signs so you don't forget about them. So 1 minus 61. And then for the denominator, x2, 125 minus x1, 100. And we'll simplify that fraction. 1 minus 61 is negative 60. And then 125 minus 100 is 25. And let's see what the calculator says that's equal to. 60 divided by 25. Two and four tenths. So this is negative two and four tenths. That's our slope. Okay. That's what you do first. Find the slope. 
then um, plug the slope and the coordinates of one point into uh, the formula intercept form. That's what slope intercept form looks like, y equals mx plus b. It doesn't matter which point you choose. Um, you to pick the first point or the second point, it doesn't matter. I'm probably going to just pick the second one because one of the numbers is one that's a little bit easier to work with. So 1 equals, and then m we know is negative 2. Point four. And that's multiplied by x, which is because we're using this point 125, which is going to then add b. b is the thing we don't know yet, so we're solving for b. Okay, so let's multiply. Negative 2.4 by 125 is negative 300. And I want to isolate my variable b by doing the same thing to both sides. We're going to add 300 to both sides. So 301 is what b is equal to. And so now I know the slope and I know what B is. So I can just write the equation of the line. Y is equal to slope M, this number here, negative 2.4, times X plus B, 301. Okay. So you can do this with any two points that you need to connect with a line, but this is one way to do it with these two points, which I have going on our, our current graph. So this is what I'm going to type in. So I get a, a piece of the function that connects the points that I need it to. Okay. So this purple piece here, I want one end to be there and I want the other end to be there. So right here for the purple line, um, f of x equals negative 2.4 x plus 301. Okay, and so here it's connected. Um, see, x is less than 100, and then x is greater than or equal to 100. So there's no gaps in my track, and there's no overlapping of the track, which would not make it a function. All right, so so far we have the exponential, a linear piece, uh, absolute value piece, another linear piece. So for this one here, you still need one more part because that's only four. So the one that is missing, is it quadratic? Y equals AX squared plus BX plus C. Now you don't have to have all of that part. You could just have F of X equals X squared and then kind of play around with it. Um, but you do want it to start here at 125, your domain. And then because x is less than 125, it doesn't include 125 on the purple piece. For this next piece, we do want it to include it. And then, you know, wherever it is you want it to stop, that's up to you. Squared. And so I don't see anything yet because um, I've restricted the domain. So I need to get this graph, like, way over here. <laughs> uh, 
And you can do that with like how we did here. We changed the vertex. Remember that? Not really sure if that's the best part for another going up part, but. So if you want to change your vertex, you need to put parentheses around the X. And you subtract the H. Do I want my H all the way over at 125? And then I would want my K not sure if I want to specify that. Maybe it's just a little tiny piece that goes back up. Okay. Not the prettiest track, but for this project it works. Okay, so you have, <laughs> it's kind of like a big M. Uh, you have choices on what you do. You don't have to like use this stuff exactly. This is just an example of showing you how you play around with it. Um, but once you have this done, this is what you screenshot here for part A. Okay, insert image here. This is where it will go. For your graph, you would put the picture of your graph here. And then for part B, you would um, screenshot these functions here. Now this is really important when you're doing your work, uh, you're logged in. Make sure you save so you don't lose your work. Okay, so I'm going to leave that up. I'm going to leave the Jamboard up. It's not opening for me for some reason. Oh, I know why. So it's over there. Okay, so you guys have access to the Jamboard. You have this. Um, you can use this as an example, but you do need to change it a little bit. Do you guys have questions?